All right. Thank you all for joining us, for those who just uh, came in. Um, this is the Jupiter in Education session. Uh, our next uh, talk is by Thomas Dupri about flexible course management and validation system using Jupiter Hub with additional services using Flask. So please welcome him. First slide. Ooh, okay, better. Um, it's, uh, I work in, uh, in a complicated project uh, with many logos involved, um, which uh, so because there's a there's a research project, there are uh, multiple universities, there are tons of people, so it'll simplify. Um, my job is to provide Jupiter Hub to these two uh, establishments. So you have the um, Lyon One University, which is a rather big university for, for France, and the uh, INSA, which is uh, an engineering school that is on the same campus. And uh, the money comes from Include, which is a, a research project I will, uh, I will develop a bit later. On the menu today, um, first I'm going to talk a little about the, the project aspect, because there are things that could, that could be of interest. Uh, then I will go into the, the meat of the, of the talk, the, our platform, what we developed, because it's not just a Jupyter Hub. There are some additional stuff we made. And, um, and then uh, I'll talk a bit about the cool stuff we've been uh, prototyping. And finally, a bit about the future. So project. Um, the start. So it starts in the, the Department of Mechanics of uh, Lyon 1. Mark Buffa, um, he, well, so he wanted to use Jupyter for uh, teaching, so he set up a Jupyter Hub on, the, on the, the servers of the department. And uh, he, he really, really likes to tinkers, so he added lots of stuff over the years. And uh, now we're in uh, stage two because he um, managed to get some uh, fundings from a research project, which is Include. The idea of Include being Here's a stack of cash. You have three years. Do things that are um, about teaching, about computers, and about uh, including people, hence the name. And uh, see you in three years to see what worked and what did not. So there are a ton of uh, different actions inside of this. My action is uh, this one, Jupyter Hub. This, this, this. So the, the stage two uh, is to extend the user base uh, by a lot. Um, from one department to many, many, many uh, students. The goal is also to like to buy new servers to uh, accommodate the students. And uh, now we actually have a team as opposed to before where we had not. So that's me and another person. And we'll soon be joined by someone else. Um, with that out of the way, here's the platform. Um, this is how we currently have our our architecture running. So we have five servers, once per school year, or well, university year. Um, and each of them runs multiple courses. Well, all the courses of that year, they run on the same server. And uh, I'll talk a bit more about how we did that. And the, the, uh, the other interesting part is that we set up different resource limits for different populations of students. Uh, so it goes from the uh, the, the masters who run machine learning and needs a lot of power to the uh, first year license who runs uh, while true loops, which do not need a lot of power. Now the ingredients of what we deployed. So there are three, Jupyter Hub, you know about this, uh, NB Grader, you probably know about this if you've been in, into teaching. Um, it's a great Jupyter plugin. I will quickly go over what it does. <coughs> and then the third part is the, the Flask. Uh, rather, it's a Flask application we made. Flask, we did not make Flask. Flask is a, a Python framework to develop web applications. And we, we basically have Jupyter and this Flask application running at the, on the same server and they um, integrate into each other. And Bigrader, for those who don't know, uh, the UI looks like this. You create assignments which contain notebooks and other files like data sets, text, or images, whatever. Uh, then you, um, uh, th it lets you do a lot of uh, cool things like uh, making a, a teacher uh, only versions with like the solutions and auto grading. And then you generate a student version without all the, with just what the students are supposed to see. The students, they can fetch it through a UI like this they hopefully they complete the assignment, then they submit it, and you get it back into the previous UI to um, 
grade it, uh, gave them feedback, that sort of stuff. Um, NB grader is usually aimed at like you have one course on one Jupyter Hub instance. It's more um, here we in our case we we run a lot of courses on the, on the same instance, and um, that's how the that's where the, the Flask application comes in. So the Flask application runs as a as a Jupyter service. So we access it through control panel services, um, and actually each course is itself a service. They are not shown in that list because they've been configured not to. Instead, what you see are portals. Uh, they are basically groups of uh, groups of courses. So here you can see uh, well portals about um, mechanics, but there's also a portal about uh, GEP, um, electric engineering, and uh, physics. You click on that, and you get this uh, wonderful piece of UI with a retro design. It's not bad. It's retro. Okay. Um, <laughs> here you can you can see two elements. So basically, it's a list of courses, except you have two times the list, um, and you only see the courses you are a teacher of. So there are many more courses on this on this platform, but I only see those I am in the in the team of. Um, the first list is the or links that go to the Jupyter environments of your courses, because since they, they are, each course is a bit like its its own user. So you impersonate that user and become the course, and you, you can, uh, well, make the assignments So you from the, the, um, the Jupyter environment. And the second one, the, the, the one I'm going to delve into, is the uh, course management. So if you click on these, you will get to this screen, which is looks even nicer, doesn't it? Um, here you manage one one course. Um, don't bother reading too much; it's in French and it's not the the most beautiful piece of UI. Uh, important bits: uh, this this feature lets you um, restricts access to students. So you have two modes: either you open it to every student, so every student logs into the platform can see the assignments of this course fetch them, submit them. If you don't want chaos, you can instead input a list of, um, so on the, on the left you can see a list of numbers. These are the IDs of our students in, our, um, uh, in, our so um, in the software of our university. And uh, it looks a bit weird to have to enter that list, but actually you, just, you would just copy-paste it directly from the, the, the software of the university, which gives you that list. So you click on your course, give me a list of students, copy, paste into this, and uh, and let go. And uh, the second part of that screen is uh, the list of the assignments of that course. So it's a bit like NB Grader, but uh, worse looking. Um, and if you click on one of these assignments, you get the assignment screen. So again, it's in French, don't bother reading. Uh, from this screen, you can do a lot of things that NB Grader can do because it, it calls NB Grader, so there's no no surprise. So you fetch the assignments, you run the auto grader, this kind this kind of stuff, and but with uh, with more things. So uh, we built into it um, a feature to export the grades in the format that our um, um, the software of the university wants for convenience. And the other very interesting things we built is a, a way to view the submissions. And we'll dive into that. So if you click on the, on the well, bilan TP, you, you will get uh, the, to view the submissions. So we get, you get a, a big HTML page, which starts with this. So that's the list of the students who submitted something. Uh, and it works a bit like a wiki. You would click on the link of a student, on the name of the student, and it will uh, scroll your your screen down to the part that of the page that relates to that student, where you will see something like this. Um, tons of numbers. The what's interesting here is that we we set it up in this example to require multiple files. So uh, you we require from the students a report, a, a Python library, a Python program, and uh, it's not shown, but we also require a notebook. So these are files uh, he needs to provide. And the application detects them. And the, the cool thing is that you have all these, these files here uh, with, with links to quickly access them. If you click to access the notebook, you will not access the notebook itself. You will, well, by default, you will access the um, a version of it converted to HTML for a, a, view, a better viewing experience. 
You can still access the notebook itself if you, if you want, but that's just the quality of life. Um, if you click on the, to see the report, you will see, well, the report, they had to submit it in the markdown, so if you, here you see an HTML converted version, again, for convenience to view it. And the other very cool thing on the screen is you, you get what we call diffs. So for each of the files that we ask the, user, uh, the students to submit, we, the, well, we, the application compares them to the other files uh, of the other students to see, hey, are they similar or not? And it gives a score between the zero and one, one being it's the same file. And the other interesting thing is that it gives you the link to the students whose file matches the, close, the closest. So if you get a, a high number, well, here uh, the high number would be 0.63, but it's not really like 0.8, you start to worry. Uh, you would click on that other students and you can check for yourself, is, is this the same thing or not? And now let's, uh, let's talk a bit about the cool stuff. So as I said, Mark Buffa is a, a bit of a tinkerer, so he likes to include a ton of stuff. Um, one cool thing he included was is the notion of groups. So uh, when you have a course with a lot of students and maybe you have multiple te uh, assistant teachers and you want to delegate part of the work, uh, here what we, what we do is um, we basically make one course per group and one main course. The main course contains the, the real file, it's the, the original course, and then the, the groups, the files of the groups, they will their the repository will point towards the, um, the the main course, so they share the same uh, assignments in the way that the, the students will fetch the same thing, but they will be separated into their, their own course. So you can say, well, teacher assistant A, you get group one, so I put you in the team of group one, and you only see group one, you grade these people. Teacher assistant B, you get in the, in the, in the team of group two, you grade these people. Another cool thing, so um, here on the screen you can see Comsol, which you probably never heard about. Uh, it's uh, just an example. It's a general purpose simulation software, which is used a lot in mechanics. Um, that thing doesn't run in Jupyter, because, of course, well, not yet, at least. Um, and the, the idea was to, well, how do we integrate this into our, uh, the assignments that uh, students can, uh, can have to do? Uh, the, the answer was uh, Xpr something called Xpra, which is a remote display server. Um, so you would, uh, you would log in as usual, but you have another op option, which is an Xpra session. And it, it runs, well, it runs a, a session on our server and it feeds you the, the video stream of what happens. And so you have, like, you have a computer to run software on, on it and we can pre-configure it. You have a console installed, which you can run. And uh, we, but we can go further, so we can also integrate other apps uh, thanks to Xpra. Typically, um, um, let's say, well, uh, you want other apps like uh, Ghostwriter, which is the a markdown editor, so that you can say to students, well, use this instead of like writing by hand, you use this uh, designed, uh, this special purpose markdown editor. Well, they can go on the UI, they can click on Ghostwriter, and they will, same thing, they will open, it will open a session for them, a remote session with the software running where they can um, write their report in this case. Okay, so now we'll talk about, a bit of about the future. So as you've probably seen from the screenshots, we're uh, still a uh, still work in progress. W um, the, the platform runs, we're slowly uh, onboarding teachers. We're nowhere near the, the number of students I showed at the beginning, like those are the number of the, that many students in the university, but more realistically, we're more in the, in the thousand, around thousand right now. Um, so the things we are, uh, want to uh, include next are the, so Shibaret identification. Shibaret is a, a federation of identity providers. So the idea is that right now, our identification only supports uh, Lyon 1 which is a bit of a problem when you collaborate with INSA who have their own notification. So, and in the future, we may uh, have to collaborate with uh, the region as a whole, so all the universities of the region. So we'd, we'd like to kill uh, N birds with one stone. 
And that's why we're looking into this this solution, uh, which would let us have a one authentication that works for uh, for all the um, all the higher education etab establishments of France, at least maybe more, probably more. Um, next, the we need want to have a server migration. We we bought servers, and now we need to migrate to them because we're still um, living rent free on the servers of the Department of Mechanics. Um, and in the process, we also want to move from um, uh, the KVM hypervisor to something more like OpenStack with more high level to be able to like spin more VMs and uh, and, and join the game. Um, the well, third bullet points is as you as you've seen, most a lot of features are prototype or like with uh, weird UIs and this kind of stuff. So we want to make them more solid before offering them to users. Um, and finally, yeah, there is a big big job of uh, onboarding teachers. The uh, one one cool anecdotes I have on this subject is that um, computer science people, or at least the department, our department of computer science, they, they told us, well, we won't, don't want to use Jupyter because it doesn't train uh, developers to develop. It trains the the other non-computer science people to use Python. And that's great, but we want them to have the, the real experience to deal with files, to compile them things by hand and. Okay, sure. And uh, what do the <laughs> what do the non-computer science people tell us? Well, this looks like a, a perfect tool to learn to develop. So that's for computer science people, not for us. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, there is some some work about uh, well teaching teachers <laughs> how to use the tool and how cool it can be. That's also one of the one of the plans we have. Yep. So this is a recap slide with uh, bubbles about stuff I talked about. And at the bottom left corner, you can see the contact information if you ever want to get in touch. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'd say it's around 30 teachers, something like that. It's a bit on and off, on or off, because some sometimes they come, they use it for a week, and then we don't hear back from them. So are they users? Are they not users? D they get discouraged. Are they waiting for the new year? It's we don't really know. So I would say ballpark estimation of 30, 30 students, 30 teachers. Sorry. Yes. Well, long ter long term sustainability. Yes, that's. Um, uh, as you've noticed, with uh, we're running on a budget of three years, uh, the. I should have put more logos. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> so Lyon, Lyon, what Lyon One University is trying to do at the moment is build their own data center uh, on the parking lot, and um, the <laughs> yeah, it sounds weird when I say it, but really that's the truth. Um, and so the the plan is to transition towards this, uh, right? But it's like it's being built, so. Maybe we'll get. Um, also, we need the the state to give uh, jobs, um, civil servant jobs for people to work there. For example, my job because my job is a fixed term contract for three years, for obvious reasons. And uh, I've got a lot. I've had a lot of uh, wink, wink. Uh, for sure, you'll get this post, this job. Uh, maybe. So that's a very real issue. Uh, right now, like I'm doing the best I can in three years, and uh, I'm, I'm letting the the higher ups decide what they want to do with it. Yeah, uh, the way it works is that basically each group is its own uh, its own course. So um, uh, what we're using behind the scene are uh, symbolic uh, symbolic links essentially. So the course that would be a uh, group one, for example, has everything as a group except its uh, source folder, which contains the assignments that students will fetch, is actually a symbolic link to the source folder of the main course. So that's why they fetched uh, the original. But their submission still goes to the group one course, and this it's self-contained in that. <laughs> um, we, we could uh, regulate AI out of the of the sky. No, um, truth is I don't know. I think uh, the AI is progressing so fast that it's uh, you you have. I think you you could see the two viewpoints. Um, there are some people who would say that it's the it's the doom of. Um, teaching as we know it because everyone will use AI for everything instead of learning themselves and you will have the other people who would say well it's the new um, uh, computing machines uh, right that's every all the new smartphone of the new like it disrupted a ton of stuff but now that it's there it's, it's very convenient to have and uh, there are still smart people around so didn't turn us all into idiots we, we can hope that AI doesn't do that 
Well, you would think, but ChatGPT is not completely deterministic in the way it generates text. So um, if, they, if, if they're using the same prompt, a very detailed prompt, they would probably get the same output. But if there is a very generic prompt, like for example, if they don't put many, a lot of efforts into their prompt, they, they, they can get very varying answers. Um, uh, there was one cool tweet I saw the other day. It was like, uh, hey, however will I do? It was the teacher. However will I do to detect if a student is using ChatGPT? And she posted a screenshot of the, the assignment, which starts by, as an AI language model, I cannot. And they're like, mm, OK, I think, uh, <laughs> I think I know the answer to this one. OK, well, uh, I guess uh, we're done.